So I'm going to discuss with you four different companies, actually. First, TikTok. Second, Grab, which is a Southeast Asian company. We're going to discuss Sony. We're going to discuss Apple. And I'm going to conclude with three points on what ties all of these organizations together in the strategies that they're deploying and some of the news that I've seen over the last 30 days. Now, let's start with TikTok. I'm pretty sure that you heard of TikTok. I know you read about it every time, but let me decode why it is such a compelling company to watch. First, TikTok wants to be the Shopify of social media. It wants to enable every single brand, company, any offering that you have as a plug-and-play e-commerce model on the back of a social media architecture. But that's not all. Have you heard of baked feta cheese? If you have not, that is something you should look at. So there is a lady called Jenny Harian. She's a Finnish food artist who put up the baked feta cheese recipe on TikTok. And guess what? It's a viral sensation. What does it do to TikTok? TikTok now wants to open 300 restaurants through the ghost kitchens model, including tie-up with restaurants like Booker de Pepo, where suddenly they will reach roughly about 130 million active TikTok users through 300 restaurants with what they call as a pop-up food culture. Now, let me also share the power of TikTok. They were the most searched, used platform more than Google for the first time in last year, 2021, right? So they are by de facto the most searched used platform on the planet. And here is an interesting fact. It is the second most effective book selling channel for Barnes and Noble. They are now getting into online education sector. So what causes a company that goes on a 10 second to 20 second viral video clip to suddenly metamorphosize into a massive digital e-commerce play? I'll come back to that. Now, let me take you to the second company called Grab. Grab is a very interesting Southeast Asian company that started as competition to Uber. It is a ride-hailing company. But guess what? They're the first new bank in Singapore with a partnership with Singtel that got them 90% share of a certain segment of customers in Singapore. That's not all. They recently started gaming. They're into streaming services and entertainment. And I'm pretty sure they'll make a play in cryptos and metaverse shortly. But they did an interesting acquisition in December called Jaya Grocers in Malaysia. What it allows Grab to do suddenly is integrate the entire value chain between financial services, entertainment, gaming, to grocery delivery, which, by the way, in retail is the holy grail because everybody wants groceries when you want them, not one day later, right? Which is what Amazon has been trying to do with Whole Foods for a long time, not fully successfully. But Grab is a very interesting company that does not actually think like a technology company. In one of the earlier episodes, I think Peter covered something called the race for the super app. Grab is right up there with Venmo, PayPal, and every other company that want to transform themselves as a super app company. And when Grab listed last month, I think on New York Stock Exchange, the entire credo of the CEO on why investors should flock to that company is because they want to be a super app company. Now I'm going to dial you back to a few years and many of the young watchers today may not know this. There was a product called Sony Walkman. Sony Walkman used two very archaic set of round looking cylindrical batteries that you either had to recharge or throw away. It had a headphone, by the way, which had wires in those days, right? But now let me play it out in comparison with Apple. Apple had obviously the iPod, the iconic product that disrupted all of music industry and, and the players and everything else. Now imagine a Venn diagram. You have on the left circle, you have Sony Walkman. On the right circle, you have the iPod. At the intersection of this is an electric vehicle. Both Sony and Apple are pushing into electric vehicle zone, as you may, and they believe that they have the capabilities to transform or reimagine mobility. And I want to read out the statement by the CEO of Sony, which I think summarizes in true word what really agility means for these new age companies. With our imaging and sensing, cloud, 5G, and entertainment technologies combined with our content mastery, we believe Sony is well positioned as a creative entertainment company to redefine mobility, right? So they're reimagining how you would travel because of a certain set of capabilities that they believe they have, but that allows them to follow their customer wherever the customer goes. And that's exactly what Apple has done with the watch, with the iPods, with the iPads, with the desktops. They've disrupted music, financial services, game development, the way apps are developed and dispersed, and a whole range of sectors, right? My last example, therefore, I bring you to is really about why is a technology company 
thinking very differently to be almost like what we would call an old fashioned conglomerate but that's not true conglomerates in the past looked at every industry as a single marketplace so if i was an automotive industry that was a company that catered to automotive industry if i was in for example salt i would be in the food or the salt business these new age companies do three things very differently and let me summarize with that first they are able to integrate their business model regardless of the industries they play in very seamlessly through digital thinking but they're able to follow their customers without boundaries here is an interesting fact if you book an airline ticket and travel to another city your travel touches 17 industries different industries including insurance these companies are able to decode that and follow the customer across 17 integrate 17 industries or whatever that's what is creating value and that's where the network effect comes in and the platform effect comes in. second is they build capabilities that are are natural to them right so i would argue that facebook building metaverse is pretty natural in our area of adjacency these companies don't believe in areas of adjacency they could pretty much get into pet foods or clinics while they're trying to do you know a beverage company so and it's very natural to do for them right the last one is they they want to build a certain degree of leadership capabilities that are not industry centric this is you know nestle hired somebody from fresenius which is a healthcare company nike's transformation came from a ceo who came from ebay so there are the kind of leadership choices they make are also very unnatural to conventional industry thinking and that is the true definition in how these companies stay agile with that 